19th century society was very hierarchical and structured. People were keenly aware of their rank within this rigid class system. It was also a time where social supports operated at a very low level, if they existed at all. Debtors could find themselves incarcerated in debtors prisons and workhouses were reserved for the deserving and destitute poor who had literally no other means to feed and house themselves. It was also a time of patronage, especially with regard to employment. The labouring classes didn't have job security and their continued employment was dependent upon their employer's goodwill. This can be clearly seen from this famine era list, noting the names of individuals who have been recommended for work. Alongside each name, there's a note noting whether they've paid their rent or not. So for example, Patrick Maguire of Grafogue, not paid, will get it when he pays. The care and upkeep of the infirm, the bereaved and the elderly was primarily the responsibility of family members. If an employee met with an unfortunate accident or illness, they and their families had none of this social security which we are accustomed to today. So for many life was precarious and charity was often the only and last resort open to those who fell in hard times. Nowhere else is this better reflected than in the 19th century petition. The petition or memorial as it was also called was a very particular and common document type in the 19th century. Petitions were written by a person or persons to someone occupying a higher position than them in society. It's always requesting something to be given to them or done for them. This is often reflected in the deferential, flattering and pleading language used, which to modern ears can sound exaggerated um, or even fawning. But most people in the 19th century couldn't read or write. So in the many local communities, there were professional petition writers who drafted petitions for a fee. School teachers, for example, often undertook this work uh, from people in their community. These professionally written petitions uh, often do follow that standard format and use that type of language. However, sometimes petitioners were literate and could write their own petitions. These types of petitions are very interesting because they tend to be less formal and formulaic and the writers often use ordinary language, which is closer to the spoken language. If a petitioner wasn't used to writing, you can hear their accents and dialects in the phrases and grammar and spelling that they use. In the collection at Strokestown Park Archive, we're very fortunate to have many petitions. Most importantly, we have petitions written during the famine by the inhabitants of the area of Strokestown to Dennis Mahon, who was their landlord and who was also a member of the local relief committee and board of guardians. So what we have here is uh, one of our petitions called the Clunahee Petition. Um, it's a very powerful document written by a group of tenants to the relief committee in the middle of the famine. They're looking for work on one of the relief schemes. Because it's written in their own words, it's very immediate and human, and you can really understand their plight and desperation from the language that they use. So they start by noting that they are a fortnight without employment. What must we do? Our families really and truly suffering in our presence. We cannot much longer withstand their cries for food. We have no food for them, our potatoes are rotten and we have no grain. They continue with some unusually direct language which, which again shows their absolute desperation. And gentlemen, you know but very little of the state of the suffering poor. Are we to resort to outrage? We have peaceably and quietly conducted ourselves and patiently submitted to the will of divine providence. We fear that the peace of the country will be much disturbed if relief be not immediately and more extensively afforded to the suffering peasantry. We are not for joining in anything illegal or contrary to the laws of God and the land unless pressed to by hunger. And they write hunger with a capital H and in large letters so it actually comes off the page. It looks bigger on the page than every other word on the page. Here we have another petition written by the former tenants of the townland of Balanafad. They are homeless having been paid a small sum of money uh, to surrender their leased land and tear down their houses. They are pleading to be allowed to keep their harvest um, and to keep their crops. So to quote them, to add to our misfortune we made a crop of wheat in November 47 and then we were served with ejectment in January 1848. We resigned our title in February and got a small compensation for throwing down our houses never thinking that we should be deprived of our little miserable crops. We half starved ourselves in order to procure that seed. We toiled in hunger and cold, hoping that we would have some means of food for this winter. But now our hopes is blasted and no chance of living remains to us while we are deprived of our little miserable crops. They end their second petition with a prayer. 
we, your petitioners, this day implore you, and before the throne of mercy and the mighty God guide you and your family and give us our little crops. It will be the means of saving the lives of 30 persons. May the God of heaven and earth guide and guard you and give us an answer, either good or bad. <laughs>